This presentation will examine conditional probability, how to evaluate conditional probabilities, and how to use them in problem solving. So here's a Venn diagram. We have three regions, region A, region B, and region C with various numbers inside. You'll notice here in the middle, A and B and C, there are three elements. And outside, we have two elements. And we're going to use that information to help us answer some questions. So how about numbers? Number of items in A, 16 plus 7 plus 3 plus 5, 31. Number of items in B, 11 plus 7 plus 3 plus 7, 28. Number of items in C, 7 plus 3 plus 5 plus 9, 24. And the number in the universal set, just add all eight numbers that you see up there, and we have 60 numbers in the universal set. We're going to use these numbers to answer the following questions. If you select something at random, what is the probability it's in A? Well, you can see we have 31 elements in A out of a total of 60 in the universal set. That gives you an idea. Similarly, if you select something at random, probability it's in B, probability it's in C. So we have those numbers. Probability of A indeed, 31 winners out of 60 total. Probability of selecting something from B, 28 winners out of 60 total. Probability of selecting something from C, 24 winners out of 60 total. But then we want to look at the conditional probabilities. What is the probability of B given A? Knowing you've landed in A, so you're one of those 31, denominator is 31, what are your chances of also landing in B? That's these 10. Hence, the result is 10 out of 31. Similarly, C given A, knowing you've landed in A, knowing you're one of those 31, what are your chances of being in C? That would be these two, giving me 8 out of 31. A given B, knowing you've landed in B, you're one of those 28, your chances of being in A, 10 out of those 28. Knowing you've landed in B, your chances of being in C, those 10 out of 28. And similarly, A given C, there's 24 in C, 8 of them are in A, 24 in C, 10 of those are in B. We can also look at the Venn diagram and answer the following question, probability of A and B. So A and B, 7 plus 3, 10 items are in both A and B simultaneously. But we have a rule. Our rule tells us the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B given A. Well, the probability of A, 31 out of 60, B given A, given A, if I'm one of those 31, my chances of being in B, 10 of those 31. Multiplying those two fractions together, you see we get 10 over 60, which matches our early result of 10 over 60, which can reduce, obviously, to 1 sixth. A and C, how many are in both A and C? So here's A, here's C. These two are in both A and C, a total of 8 out of 60 in the universal set. Using our rule, probability of A and C is the probability of A times the probability of C given A. We know what A is, 31 out of 60. C given A, of those 31, how many are in C? 8. So we have those values, 31 over 60 times 8 over 31 giving me 8 over 60, and again, you can see that those two probabilities match. Now we're going to look at a uh, set of data. We have freshmen and sophomore students. We have the math classes that they're taking. Some are taking algebra, some are taking statistics, some are taking differential equations. So this 60 means that there are 60 freshmen taking algebra. The 80 means there are 80 freshmen taking statistics, etc. Assume nobody is taking more than one math class. That's an important assumption here. Now, I can answer some questions about this data set. For example, what's the probability of a person being a freshman? Adding up all the numbers, we have 150 freshmen, 120 sophomores. So your probability of selecting a freshman would be 150 out of 270. And your probability of selecting a sophomore would be 120 out of 270. Probability of selecting an algebra student, well, we have 100 algebra students out of 270, 130 statistics students out of 270, 40 differential equation students out of 270. So if you select a student at random, the probability that student is in differential equations would be 40 out of 270. Let's look at some conditional probabilities. 
probability a student is studying statistics given that student is a freshman? Well, if that's the case, all I'm doing is, is I'm focusing on the freshman data, focusing on those 150 freshmen. Of them, how many are in statistics? 80 out of 150. And another question here is probability someone's a sophomore given they're in algebra. We have a total of 100 students in algebra. Of them, how many are sophomores? 40. So the probability of being a sophomore given that you're in algebra is 40 out of 100. Frosh and algebra. How many people are both freshmen and in algebra? 60 people out of the entire universal set out of 270. We can also look at a rule. The rule for Frosch and algebra would be probability of Frosch times the probability of algebra given Frosch. And then we can find those results. So we know the probability of being a freshman is 150 out of 270. Algebra given freshman of the freshmen, how many are in algebra? 60 out of 150. And you can see the result there again, 60 out of 270, which matches our early example of 60 over 270. Sophomore and differential equations. So these 30 students are both sophomores and enrolled in differential equations. So of our 270 students, 30 are both sophomores and enrolled in differential equations. Using our rule, probability of sophomore times the probability of diff EQ given sophomore. Sophomores, 120 out of 270. Diff EQ given sophomores, of the 120 sophomores, how many are in diff EQ? 30, 30 out of 120. So we get those results, and again, you can see that the 30 out of 270 matches what we had from reading the table directly. Okay, now we have a couple rules. We have the OR rule and we have the AND rule. The OR rule tells us the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. The AND rule tells us the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B given A. So we want to use these rules to find some values. So here's the question. Probability of A is 0.7. Probability of B is 0.5. Probability of A or B is 0.9. We want to use the previous rules to find the probability of A and B as well as the probability of B given A. Can we do that? Well, here's our rule. Probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. We're going to substitute in A or B will be 0.9. A will be 0.7. B will be 0.5. And that should enable me to solve for probability of A and B. So you can see our substitutions. 0.7 plus 0.5 is, of course, equal to 1.2. So we get 0.9 equals 1.2 minus the probability of A and B. Doing some algebra here, what do we know? We see that the probability of A and B has to equal 0.3. Well, as long as we know that, then, we should be able to determine the probability of B given A. This is the other bit of information we're looking for. So we have A, we have B, we have A or B. Now we have A and B, and we're going to look for the probability of B given A. To do that, I need to use the other rule. I need to use the AND rule. So here's our AND rule. Probability of A and B is going to equal the probability of A times the probability of B given A. We just figured out the probability of A and B on the last slide. The probability of A and B was 0.3. Probability of A was 0.7 times the probability of B given A. If we divide by 0.7, uh, both sides by 0.7, we're going to get 0.3 over 0.7, or 3 sevenths will equal the probability of B given A. So conditional probability is a nice concept for us to use. We can analyze conditional probability from Venn diagrams. We can analyze conditional probabilities from tables, sets of values. And we can also use the AND rule to determine what the conditional probability will be.